or the iPhone equipped with sensors is just perfect for gaming. So what we would like to show you now is that this is also extremely nice to teach physics. And this is what we're going to try to show you. So what we propose here is to use iPhone or in general smartphone equipped with equivalent sensors to interactively and experimentally based teach physics, I mean doing real experiment and playing with the iPhone at the same time in the way Steve Jobs showed us, but to enter what we consider as key concept in basic mechanics such as orientation versus translation. Frames, of course. Vectors. And then acceleration and velocity to end up with Studying energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, and mechanical energy, the sum of the two. So let's see how we can do that. Just before, let's precise that within the sensors that are in an iPhone, we'll make the choice to use only two. So we'll be working with the accelerometer and with the magnetometer. So that in real time, we can extract the data from the iPhone, send them to a personal computer, and what we'll have essentially here is that we'll have three vectors that are transferred in real time. The first one is the weight acceleration, the second one is the Earth's magnetic field, and the third one, of course, is the acceleration as it's measured in the frame of the iPhone. So you get in real time the three components, AX, AY, and AZ. And this is it. Let's try and uh, let us show you how that can be used. We come to the real thing. It's based on the code that's been developed here in Grenoble, and that's called iMeca. It's been developed within the program that's called Nano, Nano at School for Teenagers. So let's see what iMeca is doing when connected to an iPhone. So the iPhone now is on the table. It's still vibrating a little bit, kind of fluctuations. I pick up the iPhone like this, and then I do this. I rotate it, and then you see it moving. Do I do it? So it's orientation, rotation, uh, no translation. I can put it on the table and push it and essentially you see no displacement. Well, you might see a little bit of displacement due to the fact that we have still below the table and we're using the magnetometer as a reference. So that makes kind of a little bit of rotation. But if you just put it where there is nothing like that, then you can rotate and you see it this way. Orientation like this, 90 degrees, again, and again, so you can try to do it perfectly. Well, that's nice to play with it, and then you see the connection, and then you see what's an ideal representation of the iPhone on the screen, so that you can play with it, and that's pretty much comparable with what we've seen with Steven, Steve Jobs' presentation before. So what we can do is to move to, now, frames and vectors Errors so that we can better describe what are these rotations and what's the orientation. But we'll do it now. Right, so we're here with the rotation, and I introduce arrows. Let's do that immediately so that we can start to speak to see what we're talking about. So we have this long arrows, a blue one, a red one, a green one, and they're not moving at all whatever I do with the iPhone. Now, if I stop rotating like mad, and you look carefully, then you'll see that we have three arrows, that are a little red one, a little blue one, and a little green one that are attached to the iPhone. I can try to put this all together. So you see now the red is with the red, the blue with the blue, and the green with the green. 
Very good. I rotate it this way, and I see that they are no longer aligned. The long arrows are essentially vectors attached to the wall, attached to the building. That's called lab frame in physics. The little blue, the little red, and the little green are just attached to the iPhone. And it says a rotating frame that's attached to the iPhone. And I can orientate the iPhone the way I want within the lab frame. So one thing I can do, one thing I can do here is that, first of all, I can try to see what's, com what's going on when I do rotation. And I just see that, of course, the little blue one is just aligned with the long Z and fixed one, but the little red and the little green are just rotating. And I like that very much. Of course, once again, if I do a translation, then I see nothing. Okay, another thing I like very much as a physicist when I introduce basic mechanics is to work not in 3D. Finally, working in 3D is not that convenient, so that if you want to understand what's the position in space, the rotation, the orientation in space of the iPhone. So what you can do now is that you can add description of this orientation in free space. Horizontal one, that's top right. First vertical plane, Y and Z, that's the bottom left one, and the bottom right one is the second one vertical, that's X, Z, like this, let's say, and the horizontal one is like this. So now, what I can do is that, of course, if I rotate, then the Z one there is not doing anything, it's just projection. I see it from the top, so I see nothing, essentially, for the little Z and the large Z, in fact. But I see that the little X iPhone and Y iPhone are just rotating when I do rotation of the iPhone. I can show you, maybe. Well, the thing I have difficulty to keep, of course, the Z equal to zero, because doing a rotation with my hand that's essentially in the vertical plane is not that easy. You're not too bad here. Now, what I can do is this. I can try to make it perfectly vertical. That is what it is. And then the I Y iPhone is not equal to zero over there. I can play with all these vectors. I can also try to make all the free projection just equal. Or you can try to find the orientation for that. It's not so easy. Here maybe it is. So you can try to see, of course, that this is inclined in special position so that the free vectors projected onto the horizontal plane are just equal. And then you can just follow this projection in real time doing whatever you want as you're doing the rotation there. So and of course you can save all the data, so you can, you can follow all this projection and go to sine and cosine and all that things there. So we're still where our arrows, the one here that are fixed in labs, the little red, the little green, and the little blue that are these arrows or vectors of the rotating frame attached to the iPhone that are still described in the free planes. I said before, but mechanics is also studying trajectory. And in order to do that, the first tool we need to have are accelerations and velocity. I mean vector acceleration and vector velocity and this is what we can try to do here when we go to the level 3 of this program well the first things to do is that to reset everything and put the velocity to zero as the iPhone is on the table it has no velocity and no acceleration and you see that it's not so easy to fix the rotating frame when you transfer the data acceleration and magnetic field from the iPhone. But then we have description of the velocity and acceleration in the lab frame, which is a fixed frame defined by O, X, Y, 
and we have a rotating frame below that's attached to the iPhone, and you see nothing there at the moment, which is defined essentially by a U vector and an N vector. The N vector is parallel to the velocity, of course, as usually defined when you're working with polar coordinate. Look at that setup. Rubber squad. Might be enough to illustrate something. Of course, we can do much better if you're using just, for example, a pickup for the old video. And in that case, you'll have a very nice speed and rotation well defined and will be much more interesting when I'm going to show you this. But just for fun there. Now I start to rotate this. Well, not that quickly, gently. So, of course, on the top over there, I see U and N rotating because I'm in a fixed frame, nav frame, and also the velocity vector fully aligned with N, but fully aligned but not of constant length. That's essentially because I'm not that good here. I'm doing the rotation uniformly, and that you see in the way that the, accelera the acceleration is just adding kind of crazy display in behavior, and that is due to the fact that I'm not really good at doing this. If you look at the rotating frame, in the rotating frame now, so it's much nicer, and may, maybe I could try to keep the velocity constant in a much easier way. Let's try to do that. I'm getting better now. It's like, well, 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 no. And the acceleration seems to be roughly perpendicular as expected for a uniform rotation, but I'm really not good. Well, one thing is I do, I, okay, I come back to zero there, and then I rotate in the other direction, and I see that the velocity now is opposite to n. Acceleration is always opposite to u. That you see when you come to full description of the rotating displacement as it is there. Okay, so, and you see of course the rotation of the iPhone. That is, that kind of rotation there is this. That's good. And this says that you can study very carefully and you can save all the component there, acceleration vector, and you can try to do to do that in much more detail as long as soon as you understand what's going on there. That's it. And here I have two kinds of energy. I have the kinetic energy related to velocity. And I have the potential energy due to the fact that the, in, the, in the case of the pendulum, then oscillation means that the iPhone now at the end of the wire, that's the wire that's used normally to, to charge the battery. So it's rather rough experiment there. So, okay, now I stopped it. I move it back here, so I put more energy. So you see here, here, oh, I stopped it. Now I'm just going to move it again. So the red curve is the kinetic energy. It's moving up and down because, of course, when it is at, when the iPhone is in the highest position, then the velocity is zero. And when the iPhone is in the minimum position, then this is then the kinetic energy that's the highest. So you see this oscillation. Some of the two should be then a constant if it was a perfectly conservative behavior with no low, lost energy or no energy put into the system. Well, it is not. Now it's fixed. I'm not moving it anymore. So I start to move it again, and I see it moving up. But of course, the way I introduce the energy there is rather depending on the way I'm doing this. So I can try my best to make it conservative behavior or to stop doing anything. But then it stopped very rapidly. Let's try to do it again. All right, so I have now a lot of energy in this. decreasing because I'm not doing anything anymore. It's decreasing slowly. And you see that more or less it's decreasing with only a little bit of oscillation at each cycle, showing this is not perfect in a way I'm probably positioning the iPhone it and the way I'm touching it. But now I put more energy in it. It's just increased once again. Try to make it first. Try to make a better alignment. Okay. 
it's getting good, it's getting nearly constant. Well, that's the best I can do, but it's experimental. So probably if you were using a much better pendulum, well designed, for example, the one that's designed for Foucault pendulum, that would be a much nicer curve, but at least this is the best I can do there. So during the time it's still oscillating and I try my best to make it constant, well, I'm not very good at doing that. I have presented the fact that when you transfer acceleration, gravity vector, Earth's magnetic field in real time, then you can have iPhone positioning in space, only rotation, no translation. You can then describe this orientation in space with vectors, frames. You can work on projection and see them directly within the plane. Also, I showed you that you can follow the vectors. We didn't do it now for the pendulum. It can be down, it was all there. But you can then follow acceleration and velocity in the lab frame or in the rotating frame, polar coordinate. And you can also then follow the kinetic and potential energy and try to make a setup so that you observe what's the conservation of mechanical energy that we don't have there. Well, it would be difficult with that setup to show it's conserved. Yeah, but it can be done. Thank you.